He's kind of like that crazy uncle that says, I got a helicopter, I got all these other things. I started to go, wait, who is this guy? What exactly do I do for Black Rifle? I live outside the box. My dad was a, a sonar man on submarines, and he grew up as a surfer skater. He carried that over to us very well. I was super hyper as a child and very dream oriented. I was obsessed with, with military aircraft from a young age. I think my mom could attest by the time I was five, I could name off pretty much every fighter platform that the military had. I just loved watching jets fly. When I was eight years old, I saw the movie Navy Seals for the first time and was just enamored. Like, that's what I want to do. You look at my eighth grade yearbook, it says, where do you think you'll be in 2012? And I said, I'll be on SEAL Team 6. <laughs> so I, I guess I went a little bit of a different path. I enlisted in the Air Force and shipped off February 25th of 2003. So the contract I had signed for the Air Force was 2W0X1. It was a munitions systems apprentice, and I wasn't happy about it at all because Afghanistan had kicked off and I was seeing the news and the wars going on, and I wanted to be a part of that. By that second week is when they came out and said that we have these specialty jobs that you can volunteer for. I walk into looking for my flight of, of basic trainees that I'm in. They're all sitting in a classroom. When I get in there, on starts the TACP brief. And this giant human walks in in BDUs with army patches and every school known to man on his chest. And he starts talking about this TACP career field. And I lit up like a Christmas tree. I volunteered to go to his little tryout. And they said right in the beginning, only three slots to this school are gonna come out of this week of you guys. And I was lucky enough to get one of those three slots. TACP stands for Tactical Air Control Party, and it's the air support function to the Army. The best way to put it to anybody is we're the Army's insurance policy. They get in a fight until the enemy just might have a little bit more of an edge on them, and then they look at us and say, okay, bomb it. And that's when we get to shine. F-16 and F-15 Strike Eagles that have a 20 millimeter M61 Alpha 1 Vulcan. You move into an A-10 Warthog, which has a GAU-8, a 30 millimeter, just size of your fist. I'm gonna punch this through anything that the enemy has. December 26th, President Bush initiated the Baghdad surge. We get the phone call, hey, come, come into the squadron now and grab your stuff, you're, you're leaving. That phone call came in December 26th, January 3rd. By February 3rd, we are on the ground in Taj, staging our vehicles and getting ready to move into Baghdad. Five, 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 five. The second that we moved into that city, we were messed with every few hours. It was fun because I've never been closer to, to guys than the, the dudes in the White Falcons from that time frame and even some of them that are with us today, like Daniel Holloway. I got picked up to be an instructor at the TACP schoolhouse. Take a lap! Gentlemen, Osama bin Laden has been killed. And at that same time, I was up for re-enlistment and our career field was critically manned and we were at a 6X multiplier, so I received a $90,000 signing bonus which was insane to me. But I turned around and spent almost every dime of it on camera equipment and an editing suite. I get a phone call that one of my best friends, Danny Sanchez, was killed in action in Afghanistan. Shaggy passed out, so we decided to play a game me and Danny made up called Stackin' Shaggy. <laughs> <laughs> and 
Danny was around me all the time. I spent the next three days cutting a video together for his mom, and she was floored that we had captured all of this of Danny. <laughs> to we've totally turned into that creepy guy that eggs out of yeah, the Yeah, I know. Like, dude, I used <laughs> dude, to be Dude, I used to be able to And it was after making that Danny video, it hit me like a freight train. When one of my bosses came to me, he said, I, wa I watched that Danny video and that shot of him walking around your kitchen counter smiling at the camera, he goes, that floored me. And that kind of really defined where the spirit was in filmmaking and, and being a videographer. And it was like, I, there's nothing else I want to do more. Shortly after that, I received orders to the Seventh Day Sauce to become a hustler. When I get to El Paso, I'm doing a lot more commercial work for the tactical industry with Gary Stevens, who is now Black Rifle's creative director. Hey bro, it's Milson. We're operating under this company called Botstick Collective, film and design. And we were getting all kinds of great jobs from people like Tactical Taylor and Grey Ghost Gear and Index Fasteners. And we were shooting photography for Guns and Ammo and Recoil and all these other publications and magazines. came across this tack P that we eventually dubbed Butch Rogers. We started a cooking show called Romad Meal Time. We started a fake news team and started pestering the real news. Uh, I'm feeling pretty full, uh, however, I'm feeling like a winner. But it never, it never really took off. It was always just a hobby. I was managing a very large general interest page, and before I go to drive home, I happened to check the inbox, which I never do. And at the top of the inbox was a message from Matt Best. And he had sent a link, and he said, hey, I'm, I'm an ex-Army Ranger. I was wondering if you could share this video. I think it, it falls in line with your audience. I think it would do well. When I watched it, I knew right away. I was like, this, this, is, this was my missing piece. This is the person that should be in front of all the cameras I'm rolling because this is gold. And I respond with my phone number. So he called me and I immediately invited him to El Paso. I mean, I remember waking up the morning How to Be an Operator was posted and we were jumping up and down because it got 28,000 views in a matter of two hours. Pew, 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 pew! <laughs> now I'm ready to be an operator. At the same time his videos are taking off like wildfire, I'm getting burned down by everybody I know in the industry that I've done advertising and film work for. You could go this route or we could make our own thing. And he was like, let's make our own thing. I had this idea for Article 15 clothing. The second we had launched Art 15, it was never us thinking that we were like becoming entrepreneurs or anything. Like it was 2,000 extra dollars a month so we could buy better gear or rent things to make better videos. And by the first 10 months of Art 15 being around, we had grossed over a million dollars. It was around March of 2014 I get a message from some guy named Evan Hafer. And we ended up spending two hours on the phone. And I got off laughing hysterically. Like, I, I, I have to know this guy. We told Evan to fly to El Paso. That whole weekend is a blur. It was nothing but us laughing and coming up with the craziest things. I, I didn't get the sense initially that he was crazy. That came later. But I did get the impression that he was a very creative and talented person. So it was around August time frame. Evan called. He studied coffee for the last 10 years as a hobby. What if we did a coffee for Black Friday? We came up with the name of Dark Roasted Freedom. One more time. <laughs> Dark Roasted <laughs> Freedom. <laughs> Dark Roasted Freedom, available now. Yeah. At the time too, I had my friend Pilot X, who has one of the very few personally owned AH6 Little Birds. Why don't we do a vehicle interdiction against the Grinch? He's got a gun! 
And we posted that video, it did really well, and Dark Roasted Freedom started flying off the shelves. And then the feedback started pouring in. And all of our customers started saying, hey, I bought this coffee because the bag looked cool, but it's actually the best coffee I've had. And I started forwarding all these customer service messages to Evan. And he was like, well, I'm gonna move forward with a coffee company, are you guys in? And we're like, hell yeah, we are. When we got back from Iraq and Africa for the Range 15 tour, I just rolled down to his house and I was like, let's pack two bags and just move to Salt Lake. We need to be in the same place as Evan. Jared has this uncanny ability to kind of bring out youthfulness and positive vibes out of anybody that he surrounds himself with, which I truly believe is a huge indicator of how fun and authentic Black Rifle Coffee is, is because he's always motivating everyone around him to laugh and be fun. And that is a, an ability that I've found in almost nobody else that I've ever met in my whole entire life. Jared has brought so many different things to the brand and the company. He pulls a lot of smaller things and makes them bigger. And with the three of us uh, collectively, I think, working on the brand really early on, on the company, it just felt right. It, it, was, it was like, we're home. I think the success of Black Rifle attributes to the fact that the authenticity of a group of friends that got together to have a couple drinks and make a plan and then executed on that plan and stayed true to exactly what we wanted to do. Work with our friends, make the community laugh, bring extreme value back to the community, and at the end of the day, we're never gonna shy away from that.